All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, apparently, according to Kyle here, it's been three months since the last Records of Ragnarok video, which, good lord, if that's true, time goes by fucking fast. Three months. Fuck. Well, you know, actually, fuck it. That makes sense. Three chapters have come out since then, right? For No, only two, right? No, three. Uh, yeah, oh, no, no, right. it's, it's a month of manga. That makes sense, yeah. This, this is how we keep things relevant, ladies and gentlemen. We space them out so that way you get the next fight when we're done with this fight. Okay, so right off the bat, we have, a, we have a statement here. So, okay, so first things first, I guess let's talk about the matchup in general, what happened, so on and so forth. Uh, you want to go ahead and provide some prerequisite ground for that, Kyle, or do you want me to do it? Tell you what, you start and I'll see if I can add any additional information. <laughs> All right, so obviously, uh, if you guys watched the last video, Adam loses to Zeus, humanity is 2-0 in terms of losses, and they, they obviously need someone to fight Poseidon, because Poseidon's next one up on the list, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the only statement you are ever going to see about Poseidon in reference to anything else, and we will talk about this statement in detail. Um, but so Poseidon seems to hold some reverence among the gods, all the gods really respect him and everything like that. And so her answer to Poseidon is to, well, actually, no, it's not even her answer. What happens is the guy just shows up and volunteers to fight Poseidon, right? He, he just grabs the jug and everything. That's right. He, he's basically, she's basically like having a fit, like trying to think who the hell he's going to, she's going to put him up against. Because Zeus completely threw the um, the roster out of whack. Again, so that... So, Sasaki comes in, as he does, the legend himself, and just straight up volunteers. It's like, I got this. I, you take it easy. I'm pretty sure I got this. So then... I will no, because her first matchup lost, but I wonder then if, like, the plan was that fucking Adam would have been able to beat Shiva, or, um, Sheva... Oh, fuck. That, that, she, Shiva? Shiva? No, I'm thinking of something else right now. I'm going to let you die on your <laughs> old son. <laughs> I hate you. Right. It's Shiva. It's Shiva. No, I'm, I'm right. It's Shiva. Are you sure? <laughs> you son of a <laughs> bitch. Are you sure? Are you sure Bayonetta didn't summon him at the end of one? <laughs> No, fuck, fuck, I'm Googling it, fuck this. Uh, it's Shiva. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah, so, and I guess we're gonna get the spoilers out of the way now, since we're gonna be talking about the feats directly in more detail. Uh, we do have a fight go on, we do get backstory, obviously, we do this in every single time. Uh, as with Adam, and I think... I think it's after Adam, all the humans gain some sort of special ability, isn't it? Like, in some capacity. Because the first guy didn't have one. Uh, no, he was just wickedly strong. And the fifth guy's special ability is basically just being massively, like, too powerful for his own body, essentially. Yeah, basically, he, basically the fifth guy is just being super swole. Yeah, so... Uh, so... This guy here has his own ability. I'm not going to bother pronouncing his name. I don't know how to... Pro oh, hang on. Uh, Sa... Sasaki? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Is that not correct? Sasaki Kojiro. Sasaki... Yeah, so it is Sasaki. I was right. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> look, look, ladies and, look, ladies and gentlemen. It's all right if only one half of this team has a brain. <laughs> Go plug yourself. <laughs> anyway, so Sasaki over here fights Poseidon. Uh, it's a it's a pretty nail biting fight for the most part, I would say. Again, if you have not read Records of Ragnarok, uh, I highly recommend to read it. It's a fantastic fighting yeah. manga. Really short too, right now. Um. And they go through a fight, everything happens, all that jazz, you know, fight stuff happens, backstories get introduced, Poseidon gets, like, not the worst backstory, but the one that has, like, the most nothing in it. And then, uh, 
Sasaki wins at the very end in one final, uh, one final like fucking attack, desperate attack on both their ends. So, which is an absolute brutal kill. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think it. I don't think it tops the next one. But it, it, it is pretty brutal, absolutely. P Poseidon gets what he deserves. <laughs> For being a cunt. Like, so you're saying, basically being cut in the quarters is not as bad as being impaled. Oh, you, you say impalement, but it's nowhere near that simple. <laughs> but we'll discuss now. <laughs> when we get to the fourth fight. <laughs> Inevitably. Hopefully not in three months. Okay, so obviously right off the bat, the first big issue, like I mentioned, is the Poseidon of the Sea, or the Zeus of the Sea statement. Because uh, when we talked Poseidon. about it on live stream last, uh, what was that called? The Poseidon of the Sea. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, I, the second I fucked it up, I knew you were going to say something about it. Like, no, I'm just going to roll with it. He'll move on past it. Just like Zeus of the Cosmos and Hades of the other world. <laughs> Okay, so Zeus of the Sea. That's not a statement you can scale off of. At all. Yeah, so me and Zim, we've literally spent, like, we haven't just been sitting on our ass, like, ignoring this fight. We have been discussing it. It's just that our schedules haven't synced up in three months. Yeah, because Kyle we decided to become a productive member of society. Yeah, how disgusting. <laughs> so. We discussed in great length about this, and we came to the conclusion, Poseidon of the Sea... Oh, Poseidon for... of the Sea, you're absolutely right! I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, both sides have no brains. <laughs> so, basically, to get back to it, the Zeus of the Sea statement, it's not very good, because that's very vague. It doesn't mean power, it could... It, it, all it could mean is that he's, like, the top shit out of all of the water gods. Yeah, absolutely. Because there would be no contradicting with that statement in the slightest. Like, again, because we do know Zeus seems to be, if not the strongest god in general. Uh, he has titles to back this up, like King of the Gods, Godfather of the Cosmos. He has other titles to back this up. The only thing... we the only thing we get from Poseidon, we do get another title for Poseidon, actually. They call him the God of Gods. But he still follows Zeus, for the most part. And this alone would only mean that he sits top dog among all the water gods. It wouldn't directly mean he sits on top of, like, on Zeus's level or anything of the sort. There's no... <laughs> Unfortunately, there are no feats to correlate that potential scaling going forward. But honestly, most people don't scale the Zeus at all after fucking, um... Well, after what Zeus demonstrates. The biggest problem as well that I want to address with this statement is... The best you can do is assume that he's the second strongest out of the Greek Pantheon, which is not which is not very good because the gap between number one and number two is extremely vast. If that's the case, yeah, uh, we do get something in his backstory to support that he is stronger than most gods, but everyone fighting stronger than most gods. On on top of the fact that, like, unlike like Poseidon doesn't have this. But Zeus literally has a moment where he forces down Shea, who is literally stated to be the strongest of the Hindu pantheon. Yeah, like, so, like, and this is a cat. I wouldn't say it's a casual Zeus per se, but this is a base form Zeus doing this. This is not a, like, form manipulated Zeus at all. This is just straight base, skinny Zeus, grabs a fully enraged, all eyes active Shiva, and forces him to the ground with just one hand. Which, again, now, correlates. Now, after re reading it, while I will admit that Shiva was still kind of, like, ready to go if he had to fight, the problem is he's he still had a moment where he kind of, like, shit himself for a moment as well. Because he wasn't he was prepared to be forced down. Yeah, he was not expecting that in any capacity. You could just easily argue that even if he could fight Zeus at that point, that still impressed the crap out of him. Or at the very least, it definitely made... 
it made it clear that Zeus could fight him easily in his base yeah. form. Like, even if Shiva could be base form Zeus, Zeus could still fight him like, and be comparable regardless. And that's his weakest form. So this is one out of the two two feats that we're going to discuss that like people use to try and scale Poseidon to Zeus. And, and but, unfortunately, it's just not backed up by the feats he shows. Yeah, it's just titles at this point. Yeah, because again, even the God of Gods one, you can just argue is a respect thing. Because Poseidon seems to be the quintessential god example that everyone looks up to. Zeus sure as hell doesn't look up to him. <laughs> Zeus over here being Zeus, old fucking man. Zeus doesn't look up to anyone. So for sure, now we have the first, um, the first feat in the, uh, the first actual feat, and that's when uh, Saka Sasaki uh, catches every drop of milk from a jug that's falling over uh, casually, as you can see right yeah. here. Oh. This is more. For speed and precision, more than anything else. Yeah, this has nothing to do with AP, but this would definitely argue skill and precision, which is the main thing he was trying to sort of show there. Because I think it was the uh, the young Valkyrie directly says, everyone's supposed to come back in their prime, so why do you come back as an old man? And then the jug falls over and then he catches it. And he explains that this is his prime because this is when he's mastered every, everything he's been taught. Yeah, uh, th this this guy as an old man is just straight up superior to when he was a young man because his technique would be just far superior. You could so, make the argument that in his in his youth he'd be faster, maybe, but it it wouldn't be a very valid one. It really wouldn't matter, especially later on when we get into his ability. Yeah. So. So for for the third thing, uh, Sasaki shows. In his backstory, that he has like um, some some form of mental manipulation because he can throw images at his opponent in their head to show them what would happen if he was to fight them. Yeah. So to to take a look at the scans directly, we have the first scan of his student, uh, or not his student. This is his actual um, his fellow student. He actually loses every fight. Every fight he does, he loses. But because he loses, he's able to uh, learn from that fight and continuously replay that fight in his head. And that's that's putting his ability lightly. We will discuss his ability when we get to it. But as you see here, the guy moves in for a swing, and we see that this man easily cleaves him in half with a wooden sword, I believe. I believe that's supposed to be a wooden sword right there. That is a wooden katana, yes. So then... Based on this statement, or based on at least on his opponent, it's entirely possible he'd be able to slice someone up with a wooden, blunt weapon. Which is already superhuman to begin with. Yeah, especially with how clean the cut appears to be. Uh, and this guy's a big guy. This is a fucking... Like, you can see the size comparison. This guy is massive. Sasaki's entire thing is... Losing fights, but then replaying them over and over in his head so many times that he can anticipate any attack that's coming from his opponent. Yeah, no, like, uh, we, we just got, like, in terms of the manga scale, in terms of the manga, we just got off Adam, and they immediately throw us this guy whose ability is almost just as good as Adam's, if, if we're talking just potency of the ability. Next the week... Most oh, go ahead. Uh so just one more thing before we move on, like the the deadliest thing about Sasaki's ability thus far is he'll replay a fight over and over in his head until he wins. Yeah, and uh, just to be clear, again, we will see this in scans up ahead, but this is not something he this is not something that is exclusively to outside of fights. Uh, again, you will see the full ability in its. Uh, I'm gonna say glory because it's actually a really cool ability, all things considered. It is, and when we get into the description of it, like, I wasn't joking when I say it's a better Ultra Instinct. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are better Ultra Instinct, Kyle! <laughs> I'm still gonna do that video just to fucking uh, see what they're doing there. The fourth feat is regarding his katana. Uh, apparently, he wields a heavier katana. In accordance with the laws of inertia, Halting's acceleration was said to be nigh impossible, but he can straight up halt the acceleration so when he does this 
this was to lead into a, a rising technique that he has. Yes. Uh, this, I believe that's the very next panel, right? We see the swing go down, that saying you can't stop it, and then we immediately get into the next panel where he stops it and then moves in on Poseidon. Yes. Yeah. So this is where, unfortunately, we got to talk a little bit about how writing and stories work versus power scaling. Because right off the bat, according to... The, and this would support the idea that Poseidon does not scale to Zeus. Right off the bat, a technique that can catch Poseidon off guard to a degree is only capable of catching a swallow as its sort of like reference point, And that's only 200 kilometers per hour or 124 miles per hour. Thank you for playing it in American. <laughs> so, well, obviously I these characters... Oh, what? I know my audience. <laughs> well, obviously these characters would scale higher based on, you know, what the other gods have shown and stuff. This is a clear example to show that the speed feats here aren't going to be as impressive as they were in Zeus versus Adam. Which, again, like me and Kyle said, is kind of supports the idea that Poseidon isn't as strong as Zeus. Because all he has is a statement to work with. And uh, anything you want to add here for these two panels, Kyle? Or uh, Not particularly. At this point... What what I've put is what you basically get in terms of feats thus far. Uh, the next one will need a little bit of explaining, though. All right, so uh, we have Kyle's right here. Sasaki can dodge Poseidon's attacks, not via speed, but experience. So uh, Poseidon starts... Or do you want to go ahead and get the content here? Um, Yeah, so basically, because Sasaki has played fights and movements of Poseidon over and over in his head, his ability has okay so his ability has an unconscious thing that's not stated but it's shown where he has speed adaptability where he can continuously get faster because he's already experienced a strike yeah i can agree with that one absolutely that's that's why it's easier to put in the context why he dodged it um via experience and not speed because he's already encountered it. Yeah, so again, this gets more into the ability, because it is a little confusing just to talk about it like that. But uh, and we will get more in-depth explanations for it as well. But basically, he's already seen Poseidon attack in his head so many times that he can predict Poseidon's movements and dodge it via prediction. Similar to how uh, hockey in One Piece works, or at the very least it did work until, you know, Kataguri came out apparently, according to what Kyle just told me. Um, again, and the Valkyrie, in case you guys are wondering, like, that that doesn't scale or anything, the Valkyrie statements should be considered, like, fully supportive. I don't think anyone will dispute that. Just going to reiterate that the Valkyrie would know what his abilities are. So, despite, um, despite how young all the Valkyries look, assume that they're, like, hundreds, if not thousands of years old, because they're grabbing, because she knows all of these people from across history. So she would know what they can do and what their powers are. So she's probably met them and escorted them to, to Valhalla. <laughs> so it, so what? So whenever she talks about someone's ability, it's pretty much like gospel. All right. So Sas Sasaki meeting someone in combat once is irrelevant, as he can analyze how one walks, breathes, and blinks to figure out how they will attack. So we can go and take a look here. Uh, experience, but this is their first uh, time fighting each other, right? That's completely irrelevant for him. After facing countless opponents, suffering defeat after defeat, he continued to battle them in his mind. Kodro has been watching Poseidon since he entered the arena. He has analyzed his gait, his breathing, even the way Poseidon blinks. Um, so obviously right there, explain how good his analysis is, but I think it doesn't really do justice without the second post as well. I'd also like, before we get onto the ability, yes. um, do you know that like Poseidon should be faster than, than like, four, so he should be, like, still, like, attacking, like, faster than light speeds. Yeah, or, or at bare minimum, if you really want to be anal about it, he would be massively hypersonic, because Thor, you know, got lightning and power and stuff. I think Thor actually uses lightning in his attacks at one point. No, no, no. He throws an attack, uh, no god can dodge. No. Wait, really? Thor doesn't use lightning? Not, not in this series. 
Where's the accuracy, Kyle? I was promised accuracy. He's also the god of oak trees. I don't see him with an oak tree either. Well, he should have an oak tree to swing around. I'm not saying he shouldn't. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the thousand image defense. Via the information he gathers, he can formulate an image of the opponent in his head, simu simulating countless battles and thousands of attack patterns. No matter how many attacks or speed of the attacks, because he has experienced them, he can dodge them. And we're going to go take a look at the scam directly. Again, all the information that we just saw, which is just him walking, blinking, and breathing, allowed him to perfectly duplicate Poseidon in his head. And then he's fighting Poseidon countless times and even simulating all the thousands of attack patterns it would possess. So at this particular moment, he basically knows all of Poseidon's attacks before Poseidon, I guess, even, it's entirely possible to say even before Poseidon uses them. The biggest thing to note here is that Sasaki is so good at analyzing an opponent. He can analyze how you fight just by the way you breathe and stand. Yeah, the, the amount of information he needs to analyze you completely is absurdly lit low. Basically, now, if he can see you, he basically has got you written like a book. Yeah, so unlike when he was in his youth, when he died, right now... He has simulated so many attacks in the span of what is, like, a couple of minutes. Which took him decades before to master everything. Yeah, and we even get a statement from the Valkyrie here saying that he could do it in such a short amount of time. So very clearly not that, like, it, like at most maybe... Actually, do you, know, do you remember how long this fight lasts? Uh, yes. The fight lasts a grand total of give me a sec uh 13 minutes and seven seconds okay so being extremely like against his ability let's say it takes him three minutes to scan poseidon that's no that's that's way too long it would be like less than a minute for him to freaking see your breathing and stuff because given how good he can sense look, it look given how, how long it takes from the fight i give it 20 30 seconds at the most yeah no the, uh, like very that's why we need an anime adaptation to get the actual timestamps. no 3d shit 2d <laughs> no matter the number of attacks or the speed of each uh he simulates the following move and proceeds to avoid it so this would mean that his actual scanning ability or his ability in general would have to be faster than Poseidon's movements by a vast margin. Because even because again, it's sort of implied that he's not as fast as Poseidon for the majority of the fight. Because they're not attributing this to speed, they're attributing this strictly to his ability. Now, I, I have explained how it's experienced. <laughs> so so people can note, throughout this entire fight, Sasaki isn't effortlessly dodging. He is dodging by a hair, like, each time, and he's getting cut. Yes. But Which his ability to, to adapt to speed is getting better and better and better with each attack. That's how he's able to keep up when Poseidon tries to speed things up. Yeah, because, um, and again, as we stated, uh, and, okay, it gets even better in battle because he can see more of your movements and be able to predict more and more as a result. And now we have Divine Lightning, which uh, Kojiro actually does block, if I remember correctly. He dodges all of them. Yeah, so these are, these are uh, like, again, you can see how many stabs on the screen or on the uh, panel. Uh, it literally covers up the entire panel, and he dodges all of them. We also see uh, in, the next, in the next scan, Ares' reaction. And I... Uh, Ares is valid for the most part, but it is it is really disappointing that Ares is relegated so hard as he is in this series. He's useless. He's useless. His only actual use is we know he's stronger than most gods because it seems like the Greek pantheon seems to be the strongest in this verse. Um, so his input matters somewhat, but it would only be for technical purposes. Like the problem is, is that he only matters. For the next fight, technically. 
So oh, go on. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, you're not. You're really not. Uh, I mean, I think they did a good idea there, but it's still like Ares appears in every single fight, but Hermes is the one who has like way better feats and stuff for it. Damn right he does. I fucking hate you. <laughs> the thousand image defense. No way a mere human has begun to predict his attacks. So again, Coach. Um, oh, Coach Roy, yeah, that's his name. Kodro is already predicting Poseidon, and uh, Sasaki here managed to adapt to a faster Poseidon. Scanned. Oh, okay, so this is this is probably your favorite one right here. So, it states he surpassed him to humanity and stepped into the realm of the gods. Uh, again, um, regarding this statement in particular, this is only really valid for... Because if you were to argue for scaling based off this... This would not scale directly to Adam. Adam was always on the God's level, even in his backstory. Just throwing that one out there now. Yeah. And for the next fate, his ability is so good that he scanned not just Poseidon, but all of creation. This would include heaven and earth. All of it. Yeah, we see right here, uh, Poseidon goes in for his pierce, and he scanned deeper, the vibrations in the air, the slight trembles of the earth, he scanned all of creation at once, everything the world had given Kojiro was put on display, he would steal the technique of the gods. Which is kind of a lie. <laughs> you know, I, I, I know a guy who did do that, and we very <laughs> clearly saw him do it, so what the fuck is your excuse, Kojiro? <laughs> Unparalleled in all existence. I don't know if that's supposed to be directly after he would steal techniques of the gods, or I don't know if that falls something beforehand. But regardless of that statement, um, yeah, so he can base. <laughs> that's such a weird statement. He scanned all of creation at once, because technically that would mean. That would explain why he's so confident to fight um, what's his face later on, actually. Um. Because he's willing to fight Loki yeah. and that crew later on. If he's already scanned all of creation, he would most likely know all of... Good lord, how strong did this man get by the end of this... <laughs> during this fight? That, that one has its own implications that would need to be discussed, I think, at, at a later point. If we ever see him fight again, which should be a stomp in his favor, given what we know here. And this one right here is another one of the more iffy statements that people use to support the idea of him scaling to Zeus. Um, Sasaki dodges Poseidon Thrust and it surprises Ares and Hermes. I mean, that's easily explained to you just they're surprised that Sasaki could dodge it. That's all you need to debunk that. The, yeah. the next one, the next one that people use, which really, like, kind of shit me, is they say that um, Poseidon, if Poseidon joined his brother in the war against Zeus, they would have been able to take him down. The problem is, it's a war. We don't know how many gods are on each side, and who and how much Poseidon is contributing to that power. Yeah, no, for, for reals. Um, regarding that one as well, uh, Kyle's obviously right. And again, it is worth mentioning that Zeus wanted the fight to happen to begin with. So Zeus was not worried in the slightest of the outcome of the battle. He would have just saw it as more fun. Yeah, whether or not that would have scaled directly, whether or not that includes Poseidon against him, we don't know to be fair. But... It would have certainly, uh, it would certainly imply that he's not uh, concerned about Poseidon being in the ranks of the enemies, because it was very close to happening. Except Poseidon, How, what was Poseidon's reasoning? He just did, he just didn't like the guy. In general? It's no, it's it's undignified to want anything. <laughs> we are, we are gods. We are perfect beings, and he got upset that his brother was pretty much like shitting on their entire. Like, his entire philosophy of what a god is. Yeah. Now, so to be clear here, uh, the final the final scam we have here is Sasaki, or at the very least, uh, regarding the Poseidon fight by the looks of it, is Sasaki uh, already winning the fight. But to be clear, he switches fine styles with his friend, a dual wielded fine style, and then he immediately proceeds... 
to blitz he cuts the side in to, extent, to an extent. Yeah. So he blitzes him, he cuts both his arms off, and then cuts him in quarters. It is worth knowing that this happens when Poseidon is mid-attack in both cases. So we have one attack going forward, and he cuts off that arm with one hand, and he switches to another hand, still going in a downward thrust, and he blitzes that one as well, and then he just kills him. So by the end, Sasaki was faster. Well, well, I mean, would you still argue by the end it's just prediction? Or something of that nature, or would you say that by that point he would have been faster than Poseidon? By that point, you could argue for Eva. Yeah, regardless, the ability is incredibly potent, super good, but none of the feats scale to the Zeus and Adam fight in terms of like, if we were to argue for each fight, via scaling, Poseidon should be faster than light. But he shouldn't scale to things like the uh, right here, the infinite, um, the infinite speed punch and stuff of that nature. Yeah, because the fist that's a past time, the panels literally show that the time stop happens. Adam is also affected. The eyes of the world then copy it, which allows him to move. Uh, that's still infinite, by the way. But well, we do. To this, he does it after the attack starts, so they would be that... after time has stopped. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, go ahead. And so, when the punch lands and he twists Zeus's neck around, time is still frozen. Yeah. It is worth knowing that Ares can see all of Poseidon's attacks, but he can't see the punch that surpasses time. Even if you want yeah. to argue that... Oh, God. So basically, like... It just shows that the gods aren't immune to time manipulation. Yeah, or at the very least... Well, it's because Hermes is the weird one there. Because Hermes very clearly saw what happened. So do we assume he has infinite speed and isn't affected by time stop? Or... Like... I don't appreciate your willingness to give him infinite speed, Kyle. Hey, when I have evidence... You know, he said he felt it, Kyle. He didn't say he could see it. Oh, yeah, and yet he demonstrates it in great succession. <laughs> Maybe he has the ability to scan. <laughs> so sucky. <laughs> you never know, Kyle. I don't appreciate your assumptions. Not an assumption if I'm right. Oh, I do. <laughs> but so, yeah, no. Unfortunately, again, we saw that the main feat that of speed was strictly the Koji, the um, the swallow speed feat. Uh, obviously, they would scale higher than that based on you know Poseidon would be vastly faster. But the fact of the matter remains is nothing in that fight is directly comparable or superior to the best things in Adam versus Zeus. Which would help support the idea for why Zeus is the top of the Greek pantheon. Yeah. Um, for people who wanted us in this video to go over um, our thoughts on Adam versus Sasaki, we're doing a completely separate video for that. And we'll go deep in depth with that one as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Because uh, the, the uh, out of the other humans that pop up for now... The only person who could potentially fight Adam in terms of humanity, and even among the gods, if we're being honest, is Sasaki, potentially. And some people do believe he put up a good fight. Again, we will talk about this in more detail um, for why one person would win over the other. Because while, while it is an argument you could make, it's, it's thankfully a lot more clear-cut once you understand the fundamentals of the abilities and such. Yeah, once we get into the scaling as well, there is an easy clear-cut winner like even if when we like we were discussing if we did or when we did and didn't equalize the stats there is still an easy winner yeah and uh if if, if you watch these videos a lot you prob or well i mean if you watch the live streams to be more accurate you kind of already know where i sit on this one uh and you probably i think you could guess where kyle sits on this one as well 
Um, but yeah, no, with that said, that's ultimately the majority of the fight. Uh, again, the backstories only really support for the techniques. Uh, for Posada, the backstory does really nothing because there's no feats at all. It's we would just know he's superior to strong nothing. gods or something. The problem is, is we can only scale him above, like, four, and that's being very generous. But most of the scaling comes from Sasaki. Yeah. Strangely enough. Uh, I, I think, like, the writer realized that he would have to have, like, the more feats to work with or something of that. I, I don't know, like, because, again, he's not afraid to show timestamps or anything. The Zeus fight proves he's not afraid to do shit like that. But then immediately in this one, it's just like, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Because he's been clear before, but this one in particular, he's just not. I don't know. Maybe we'll get some. Maybe we'll get some background stories later on for why it happens or how much. Post well, do we have another Greek guy coming up besides fucking um? What we call it besides Hercules next or no? Heracles and uh, yeah, Apollo. Right, we're still getting Apollo. Apollo might be able to upscale Poseidon because Poseidon would be at bare minimum second or third in the actual uh, in the actual story of the Greek mythology. I, I think we can agree on that one, right? That he would still be top three. At the very least, because they brought like their A game. Yeah. So, <laughs> does Hades just suck dick in his boots or something? I don't know, like, I, I think that's why they have Anubis and not Hades. Hades, because it would have just been a whitewash of fucking Greek. Yeah, I was gonna say, you have to diversify it up to some degree. Although, to be fair, well, while I do like that there is a, while I do like that they do diversify it, the series would have worked just as fine if they just kept the Greek pantheon. Or if they just chose one pantheon. Yeah, because... Yeah, no, that's fair, because, yeah, but very clearly, Greek seems to be the more, I'd say it's the more favorite of the authors, to some capacity, because Zeus is the king of the gods, and almost all of the Greek gods, well, you see more Greek gods in the side panels than you do other types of gods, like in the first one where you see Aphrodite and stuff. Yeah. I I'd say there's some degree of favoritism here. Yeah, no, but ultimately... Um, that's about it for the Poseidon versus Sasaki fights. Uh, obviously, if you have comments or disagreements or you have arguments, please feel free to make them in the comment section down below. We'll be happy to take a look at them. And, um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, thank you guys for your time. Or, hang on, Kyle, do you have anything else you want to add for this one? Yeah, hopefully it doesn't take us three months to make another video. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for your time as always, and have a nice day. We'll see you guys on the next stream or video.